this sheet is in the digital workbooks or, or in the workbook, sorry. So if you printed it, you have this worksheet and you just work directly on it rather than writing down the questions, okay? Uh, but all it is is balancing and identification of reaction types. So you guys will probably get through it pretty quickly. Um, but as we get further down, um, I don't think there's any really. I don't think there's any really tricky balances. I do have one worksheet that we'll work on probably later on this week that has some tricky, tricky balancing in it. Okay, um, where it's not even a reaction type that we would identify, but it's just to kind of really make you think about how to balance. Okay, so I want you guys working on that for now. Okay, and obviously the key to that is in Google Classroom. Okay, um, and you can check them you know later on. Uh, so, before we get started on that though, I need you to put your phones back in the pouch there, okay, and then get to work on this piece. Um, generally, if you see, you want to change it to OH, HOH, if it's in a replacement reaction. It, not always. It could be that there's a setup where it's like something with oxygen and it's going to be oxygen by itself over here in water then you wouldn't, but in general, yes, in a replacement reaction, you're usually gonna have hydrogen and hydroxide, so it's easier to track that way. In a combustion reaction, definitely leave it as H2O because it's way easier to track it that way in a combustion reaction. Okay, yeah. hey, any other ones, guys? Um, on the test, would you take marks off if we didn't turn it into HOH or? No, I would probably have it that way. Like I would on a test put it in the way that is the most logical to solve it. Because this isn't my worksheet, they haven't done it that way. Yeah, like if we were predicting it and then we didn't put HOH there, it'd still be fine. Still be fine, yeah. As long as you get it right. Water's water. Water's water, I don't care how you write it. Whether it's hydrogen. As long as it has two hydrogens hydrogen and an oxygen, oxygen you can write them in any order you want. Yeah. Die high. O H two would be weird though. Don't write it that way. Well, okay. That would just be. Well, then it's yeah. two hydroxides. No, OH two would be oxygen well, dihydride. Yeah. Don't write it that way. That one doesn't make sense. All right. Okay. Any other ones giving us trouble, guys? Uh, Jay. Jay. All right. Um, so Jay, we've got iron. Reacting with water. So here's a replacement reaction where it's a good idea to leave the water this way. Okay, why? Because on the other side of the equation, there is uh, a hydrogen gas by itself, right. and there's H2, so you don't want to break that with Exactly. There's no hydroxide on the other side, so there's no reason to write it as HOH. Now, what's tricky about this one is the typographical error in the sheet. There should be a blank here. You got to be able to write a number in front of that or you're never going to get that to balance. So there has to be a number in front of that hydrogen and that's what usually throws people. I think I already had two people come up and ask about that. Okay, uh, so on this one here, uh, oxygen probably best to do first. It's the biggest number, at least we'll give that a try. Okay, so if I put a three there, that balances my oxygens. Then it gives me six hydrogens, so I need to put a three there. And I have two uh, irons, so a two there, so two, three, three, one. I think would balance that one. Yeah, okay. that, that makes a lot it's misleading to not have a blank there. It makes you think you shouldn't put something there, but you should. You must, in fact, put a three there. Okay, any other ones? Okay, keep going. Okay, so for R, we got a double replacement reaction there. Um, probably hydrogen or ammonium would be our best bet to start with. Um, there's three ammonium over here in the products, okay? But there's only one here in the reactants. So I'm gonna start with a three there. And when I put that three there, it's gonna give me also three hydroxide ions. So I'm going to go over to the water and write three hydroxides there, which then gives me three hydrogen, which is good because I've got three hydrogen and the hydrogen phosphate over here. 
and then I think it's good because there's one phosphate on each side from there. Okay. The tricky part with that one is the, the ammonium and the hydroxide and what they do. Okay. Any other ones? G. Okay, so yeah, trick with G, remember we got to um, change that to HOH. Um, then we've got two OHs here in the calcium hydroxide, so I would put a two there to balance those. When I do that, it gives me two hydrogens. Come back over here, put a two in front of hydrogen chloride. That makes my chlorines work, and I've got one calcium on each side, and then I should be good from there. Is that all right, Keegan? Yeah? Any others? Um. Okay, so we got a decomposition reaction, but a fairly complex one. But here's the good news. It's already balanced. It's already balanced. Okay, okay? Uh, and the reason being is the carbonate breaks up. So instead of having CO3, we've got CO2 over here, and the oxygen that's missing is still here attached to the calcium. So it's actually 111. One, one. Yeah, and that throws you, right? Like oftentimes, Spoiler alert, I throw a couple in, like on an exam or on an assignment, I throw a couple at you that are already balanced, okay? And those are often the ones that throw people the most. Okay? Because they're like, oh, I'll put it, I would never put one in here that's already balanced. Just so you know, I would totally do something like that, okay? And it is entirely possible that you could get one that's all ones. Okay. Any others? Okay, how are we feeling about the balance? I mean, it's, it's math, right? I mean, we got to make sure we're going back and forth, back and forth, and, and kind of getting everything. But, um, you know, it's, it's just something that comes with a bit of practice. Okay. How many people have done that whole page? Okay. Um, all right. Well, we can come back to that any time. But let's look a little bit here at um, predicting the products. I think we did that one yesterday, right? Yeah. yeah. Did we get them all done? Mm -hmm. I think so. No, I don't think we got past number five, did we? We did, five, yeah. we did to number five? Okay. Um, you said six is going to be the surprise for today. Okay, six is a surprise. <laughs> there it is. Okay, um, so let's, re let's just quickly review here what we got to do if we're going to predict the products of a reaction. What's the first thing we do? Identify the type of reaction. Identify the type of reaction. Okay, once we know the type of reaction, what do we use that to do? Determine the product. Yeah, we use its pattern to determine the products. Okay, so if I know in a, in a synthesis reaction that the two elements are going to combine, I put them together in an appropriate way. Okay, um, and then I have to check for a couple things in the products. What are they? Special elements. Special elements. Uh, well, if I'm writing it like this, I would have Roman numerals, but I would definitely need to drop and swap if I had any ionic compounds. Once I've done those two things, then I'm safe to finally balance the whole reaction. Okay, so reaction type. Okay, analyze the pattern to predict the products, look for special elements, drop and swap ionic compounds, balance the whole reaction. Okay, those are the rules and steps for doing prediction questions, okay? So, I'm gonna leave all five of these up, okay? You guys can get started on them. I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll kind of work through, you know, one every couple of minutes here and see how we do. All right, so on number six, I've got magnesium reacting with lithium nitride. What kind of reaction is that? Single replacement reaction. Okay, um, so in, in a single replacement reaction, the lone element replaces the part of the ionic compound that it is like. Since magnesium is a metal, it's going to replace lithium. lithium. All right, so that means then that lithium is going to wind up by itself over here, and magnesium will have uh, nitrogen as its partner. Okay, so now I've done the first two steps. I've identified the type of reaction, I've used the pattern to predict who goes with who. Now what do I need to do? I need to drop and swap the ionic compound. Okay, so uh, this is a minus three, this is a plus two, so I'm gonna have MG3N2, 
Okay, so that's done. Uh, I'm supposed to check for special elements. Do I have any? No. no. Okay, uh, so now what? Balance. Now I balance, right. Okay, um, three is the biggest number and it's on both lithium and magnesium. Um, but if I balance those, I'll just have to go right back and change the nitrogen after, do you agree? Mm -hmm. Probably what happened to you, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna balance the nitrogen first. And here's why that happens. What thing in this reaction has the biggest charge? Nitrogen. nitrogen. So it has the biggest effect on the reaction and that happens sometimes, okay. Um, so I'm gonna balance the nitrogens first. Now it's balanced, but now I have six lithium. So what needs to go here? Okay, and what needs to go in front of the magnesium? Three. Yep. Okay, everybody all right with that? Um, number seven, I have diphosphorus trichloride as my only reactant. What kind of reaction is that? Decomposition. Decomposition, okay. Um, in a decomposition reaction, the compound breaks down into its two elements. So, all right, so I've done the first two steps. What do I need to check for? Do I have any? Yep. Yes. Okay, what's P? Four. Two. All right, so now that I've got those done, now I can balance. Four is the biggest number. So probably balance it first. Okay, I got four phosphorus over here, but only two in the reactants. That should fix that problem, but it now gives me six chlorines. So what goes in front of the chlorine? Three. Three. Okay. Is this really a whole lot different than what we were doing before? No. Okay. All right, I'll give you a couple more minutes on eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Let's have a look at number seven. I've got a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen. What kind of reaction is that? Combustion. Combustion reaction. What are always the products of a combustion reaction? CO2. 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 Okay, so I've done the first two steps. Okay, I have no special elements and nothing to drop and swap. What do we do now? Balance, okay. Special rules? Rule of two. Okay, rule of two and balance alphabetically. Do I need the rule of two? No. Seven's an odd number. Okay, um, so seven carbons. What needs to go in front of carbon dioxide? Seven, seven, okay, 16 hydrogens. What needs to go in front of water? Eight. Okay, now I have seven times two is 14 plus eight more, uh, 22. Yep. Okay, what goes in front of the oxygen? Okay, done with that one. All right, for number nine, I have chlorine and sodium reacting with each other. Okay, uh, what kind of reaction is that? Synthesis. synthesis reaction. Okay, in a synthesis reaction, I do what? Just combine, Just combine them. Okay. No. Why? The I combine them. To go first. Okay, good. Is that a trick I would play? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, um, and I would catch a few people with it, all right? It's, if it's gonna make an ionic compound, I have to write it like an ionic compound. If it was two non-metals going together, you'd have no idea what to do with it, okay? Nitrogen and oxygen, they could go together any number of ways, okay? Uh, so this would always be an ionic compound if I'm giving it to you on a quiz or a test because that's the only way you can actually have a definitive right answer, okay? Um, all right, so I've got an ionic compound, I need to do what with it? Cool. Drop and swap. Okay, so drop and swap, plus one, minus one. All right, it's good. Now what? Balance, Balance the whole reaction. Okay, two chlorines. Where else needs two? Sodium. Good now? Yep. Okay. How many people did on number 10? Okay. Uh, so on number 10, I've got phosphorus, and it is reacting with lead two chloride. How do I know it's lead two? Because the chloride is minus one and two minus ones is minus two, so therefore the lead has the one lead um, molecule has to take the plus two. Right. Okay. Just by doing that, the same thing we would have done to figure out what the Roman numeral was. Right. Same process. I know that that's lead two. Why is that important? Because that will change. Like you have to use lead two. 
function. Right. I've got to use that same charge in the products. The charge of the lead, the charge of any multivalent metal is going to be the same on both sides of a reaction. So if it's involved, I got to figure out what it is first. Okay. Um, so I am going to have then chlorine by itself and I'm going to have lead with phosphorus. Okay. I paired everybody up. I used the, the pattern to do that. Now what? Okay, drop and swap and special elements. Doesn't matter what order I do that in, but the special elements first. So what number goes here? Two. Okay, and then I got to drop and swap this. We already figured out that the lead is a two plus, phosphorus is a three minus. So Pb3, P2. All right, so now I've got that dropped and swapped. Okay, four is still the biggest number. All right, so we'll balance it first. Uh, what do I need to put in front of the lead 2 phosphide? A 2. A 2. All right. When I do that, it gives me how many leads? Six. Okay, so what do I have to put here? Six. A 6. How many chlorine does that give me? 12. 12. So what goes here? 6. Okay. Everybody all right with that? Now, they do get a little bit trickier if I give you the reactants in words. Okay? If I give you the reactants in words, then you... You have one more thing. It's like, oh, I got to make sure I drop and swap all my reactants correctly. Otherwise, I won't even get started on this reaction. Okay? That's kind of where we'll be headed okay, going forwards. All right? So we're going to work on, or you guys are going to work on predicting products tomorrow with Miss Vespa because I won't be here. I have to go get needles in my back so I can stay vertical because I'm old and frail. Okay, um, so I will be gone all day, uh, but you will have Miss Vespa, and she's really good. Have yeah, you guys had her before? Yeah. Okay, well, you're in for a treat. She's really good. Um, and she can answer your science questions. She's a science person. I always make sure I get a science person whenever I can. So if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. She'll be able to help you okay, with any questions that you have. Okay, Friday will be your quiz. So it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that if you want help tomorrow, I'm not here. Okay, so I, I can't help you tomorrow. Now, if any of the other science teachers are around, they might be able to help you, okay? But I'm not here uh, tomorrow, so I won't be able to offer any help tomorrow, okay? Um, so Friday will be your quiz, and it'll be on some naming, on solubility, mostly using the solubility chart to determine whether something is soluble or not, and then reactions, right? And there will be some where you're uh, given the reaction in formula form, somewhere you're given it in words, but it's the whole reaction. You write it out, balance, identify the type, and at the very end, there will be one question that is a predict the products question. Okay, only one question will be predict the products. Next week's quiz will be all reactions, many of them predicting the products. Okay, but you guys are doing really well. Okay, we're doing really well on this, and you work really hard. So, I'm going to give you the last 10 minutes here of class to do with as you choose.